Hey, today we're going to create an animated GIF inside Neos. Uh, Neos doesn't currently have GIF support, so we're going to need to work around that. Now, I don't suggest you do this for anything uh, for like production usage, but it's fine for sort of jokes or gags, etc. So don't put this in your published worlds, but uh, feel free to make them and pass them around between you, um, between friends, etc. We're going to use some components here that are super useful on their own, and using them all together kind of teaches you a lot about how Neos works. So I thought it'd be useful to do, even though I don't recommend doing it for uh, serious use cases. To start with, let's see what we're going to get. So uh, this is an animated GIF playing within Neos, even though Neos doesn't have GIF support. And I'm going to show you how I made it. And uh, there are some kind of rough and rocky ways that we do this. Uh, I'm looking for ways to improve this. I might make a tool at some point, uh, but for now, this is the way I do it. So first thing we're going to do is uh, create a new empty object here. I select the empty object so we can see it in the world. We're going to open a root inspector and we're going to parent myself to that empty object. You can see this is already getting crazy. Inside the file browser here, you'll see I have a folder full of frames for this GIF. If I load frame zero, push image texture, you'll see that we've got uh, David Tennant from Doctor Who here as frame one. You'll also see that the frame one has loaded underneath the empty object. That's why I'm parented to it. So if we delete this, we go to tools, file browser, go back to the folder, and I'll put this tool that uh, converted my GIF into uh, frames in the description so you can take a look at it, as well as video links to all the other components I'm using because I've done tutorials on most of those. So here we go. Select Easy If, hit this button here, push Batch Import, select Image. You'll see they all get loaded in. Not only do they all get loaded in here, but you'll see that uh, they're all within this empty object. I'm going to move the inspector this one side. I'm going to select me. Go to the top of me, do parent under world root. That's going to reset my location. Going to do deselect, and now I'm back to normal. I'm not under this empty object. But as you can see, the... Um, oh, interesting. I shouldn't be there. Okay, well, I guess we'll do this another way then. Uh, to get me out of that object, what we're going to do is do another way of doing that, which is to go ahead and respawn. Now I'm respawned, I'm going to go around to the front, pick up my tools, because I uh, left them with inside the uh, the hierarchy here, and that's not good, so I'll put this back on my uh, div tool tip, on my tool tray there. You also see that there's an inspector in there, that's no good. Um, let's reopen an inspector on this group as well. Select one of them, open inspector, go to the top. Now it's very important that these are in order, so just double check that they're in order before you start. So 0, 0, 1, 0, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, they're all in order. At the top of your empty object, go to attach component, hit uh, uncategorized, scroll to object grid aligner. Uh, which is under O, so O, object grid aligner, auto add children, and then you'll see that everything should have now matched to the same location. And so you can see that everything's on top of each other, um, there's no uh, differences, so they're all in the same location. You can go through the frames here and you'll see the orders 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, etc. Uh, it's a super useful byproduct of the object grid aligner. Once that's done, remove the object grid aligner. That's the last we'll be seeing of it in this tutorial, but take a look at my object grid aligner video for more information about that. Next, go to attach component, transform drivers, boolean switcher. Once boolean switch is there, auto add children on that one. Attach component, data value field float. Attach component, transform drivers, panel 1D. And then let's like wire this up. So I'll explain each component as we go, but please just add them as, uh, as I've said. So the panel will pan um, a number um, incrementing from uh, its offset value to its repeat value at the set speed. So we need to set that to a number, but uh, the panel will only work on floats. That's why we have a value field float. So we're going to drop the value field from the uh, value field into, sorry, the value, the value field of the value field component into the target here. We're going to set the speed here to 37. Not the speed, sorry. We're going to set the speed here to 25. We're going to set the repeat to 37. And then we're going to grab a uh, inspect, sorry, a interface card for the Boolean switcher. We're going to grab an interface card for the value field float. We're going to open up our node inspect, our node menu. We're going to go to math, round to int. Put that in the world. Link value to round to int, and then the output of round to int to active index. 
and you're done. You've got a GIF. So that was five minutes for an animated GIF. I'm sure you could improve that process if you um, had something smooth to do. I mean, we have to kind of parent meter everything and, and do some weird stuff. Um, there are a couple of caveats as well. If you want to set this up and, and transfer it between worlds, you'll need to do a few more things, one of which is pack the logics. To do that, very important that you don't touch the hierarchy here because it's playing automatically. So click this up arrow here. This will make a parent. On the top of the parent, create a, a, a new child under that with a star. Name this logics. And then you can set the packing route here. You can then pack it. The next thing you're going to have to do, and there's no real way around this one, is go to your tools, grab the um, grabable setter, and just spam this repeatedly until you're happy because um, the frames are by default grabable. Until it stops flashing, basically. That looks good, cool. And then we can go to the top here. We can go attach component, transform, interaction, grabable. We can rename it to uh, GIF. And then we can rename the here, this uh, object that is doing all the work to frames. Close the inspector. And now you'll see that the whole thing's grabable. Um, you can probably scale it as well if you turn on the scalable property of the grabable. So we'll go to there, go to the root, we'll go to the root again, we'll go to GIF, check scalable, close the inspector. There we go. And then you get David Tennant and all his glory playing as an animated GIF. So I'll leave some links in the description. Please, again, don't use this seriously. It was just a bit of fun to kind of show you a bunch of components. So I'll link to those components in the video description. Have a go. If there are more than, say, 30-ish uh, frames, you're going to have fun. Uh, try to keep it below 100. Reaction GIFs are perfect, hence why I chose this one. Um, I like how David Tennant's saying, oh yes, but uh, I've forgotten this character's name at the back. He's really just shaking his head and saying, no, please don't do this. Uh, hope that's useful. I will drop this in the tutorials folder so you can take a look at it. Uh, if you'd like any more information on the components you use, please do let me know. I need to move fast there, but that's what you get with a complicated setup. I will see you again next time. Bye-bye.